Hi, I'm Empty G, and welcome to another Deck Tech Breakdown. Today we're going over Braids Arisen Nightmare. And so I'm really excited about this commander here because initially I was not going to really do a deck tech for it. And then I saw it pop off in my Lack of Most Hand of Hatred deck. And I was like, well, what the heck? Like, I need to look at this again as a possible commander. So let's jump right in. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice an artifact, creature, enchantment, land, or planeswalker. If you do, each opponent may sacrifice a permanent that shares a card type with it. For each opponent who doesn't, that player loses two life and you draw a card. So if we're looking at this, what does your commander want you to do? Well, it wants you to have things that you can sacrifice to this ability, right? And so I think for my approach on this, I'm just focusing mostly on creature outlet, like sacrificing creatures rather than looking at enchantments and artifacts, just because I think creatures, at least for the strategy I want to lean into, are going to be more punishing because I'm going to be adding in like drain effects where death triggers matter with creatures. And I would rather kind of focus on that a bit more. And to be frank, I also think that it's the easiest thing <laughs> to build around. I know there's like artifacts that you can sacrifice. Like if you want to do like clue tokens or something along those lines, treasure tokens, like those will be easy to generate and, you know, force your opponents to like either find ways to sacrifice, you know, whatever thing to stop this braids trigger from going off. Enchantments, I was a little like, I don't know necessarily unless I was like an enchantment creature. So I think like the easiest thing in my mind is just to focus on the creature sacrificing aspect of this. So that's what I leaned into. And feel free to also share like ideas that you would have for enchantments or lands and artifacts, planeswalkers, all that good stuff of what you would add in for, you know, trying to force your opponents to sacrifice those things. I personally think that planeswalker is not going to be the best strategy to lean into because, you know, people don't play those as much. So I think kind of the best value that you're going to get just based on the consistency of what your opponents are going to play is either doing something that's going to sacrifice an artifact, a creature, or a land. And I think land will be easier to get back as well, but I'd be really curious to hear your thoughts on that. But again, I'm just going to focus on the creature aspect of this. So moving on, what does this commander want you to do? Obviously sacrifice stuff and draw heck of cards. <laughs> and I think too, before we dive super deep into this like strategy, is to remember to at least have rule zero conversations with your opponents at the table because <laughs> this could be really brutal. Like flush bag effects and high removal can feel really bad to play against. So just make sure that if you are really heavy on like the flush bag effects or the dictative herbos effects that you are at least telling your opponents that like this is the direction the deck is going to be leaning towards because in that way you know it's not as a sad time for your opponents at, especially if you're just going to an LGS and you are going up someone who maybe has like an upgraded pre-con and you're just like huzzah here's this thing I'm making you murder all of your creatures all the time. So anyways, I'll stop rambling about that. Jumping into the spicy stuff because I'm gonna skip past some of like the more uh, staples that you kind of see as far as like drain effects go and you know, basic black drain do, I don't know, mono black things because I feel like y'all probably have a good idea on that. So I just wanted to jump into kind of some core components of what I think is gonna really help this commander stand out more. And that is, I think early game, you're gonna wanna make it difficult for your opponents to one, either keep creatures on the board or make them feel like they're gonna have to give you the card draw. So I think some ways to help with that are gonna be things that are gonna offer flushback effects. So flushback Marauder is three CMC and being able to maybe cast that turn three and then turn four, you drop braids and maybe there's less creatures on the battlefield or you already forced your opponents to sacrifice their commander. So you have a higher chance of getting that card draw because your opponents can't pay into whatever sacrifice effects that braid's going to try to trigger. In addition to that, I think if you do want people to sacrifice things to braid's effect, then having really easy like sack fodder early games, so stuff like shambling gas, that's going to reward you when that creature dies because you're going to get value from it, or doing things that uh, are ETB 
you know, get a card draw like Dusk Legion Zealot or something along those lines. Callous Blood Mage is another card that I really like because you're either going to get, you know, card draw, you're going to get, you know, more sack fodder, <laughs> or you can exile a person's graveyard. So stuff like that, I think early game, easy sack fodder, easy things to, you know, feed into Braid's ability to make it hard for either your opponents to build a board state or force them to give you lots of card draw is going to help you get way ahead of your opponent's early game. And then other things that I think are going to be really important is to limit the amount of sack fodder that your opponents have. So ways that you can do that is limiting the pool of creatures and specifically token creatures because usually people are more willing to part with a token creature than they are to part with a non-token creature. So ways that I think you can do that are with things like Archfiend of Depravity because at the beginning of each opponent's end step, that player chooses up to two creatures he or she controls and then sacrifices the rest. So I like using this to, you know, control people's like skeet swarms and then uh, like massacre worm. It's my dream and I'm still working towards this is to get a game win by dropping a massacre worm on a skeet swarm swarm essentially. So <laughs> when it enters the battlefield, opponents your uh, creatures your opponents control get minus two minus two until end of turn. And whenever a creature an opponent controls is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, that player loses two life. So I like this because it's not just a, like a one-time occurrence where the damage is dealt. It's still like if Massacre Worm's out on the battlefield, anytime one of your opponent's creatures die, it's still going to do uh, two damage to them or they lose two life from that. So that's a really good way, especially if you're having all these like forced sacrifice effects going on, for this to deal additional damage outside of whatever it might have done when it etb and it's just a great way to, you know, chip away at those 1-1 tokens. Another card that I think is going to be really good for this, because you can cast it at instant speed, so if you want to try to deal with someone's ability to pay into Braid's, you know, a sacrifice effect, and you want to get that card draw maybe, you can always cast Bloodline Culling at instant speed, because you can do either uh, one of the following. A target creature gets minus 5, minus 5 until end of turn, or creature tokens get minus two, minus two until end of turn. So that kind of has like a, a baby, like massacre worm instant speed effect that I think would be really powerful. And something else too that I think will be really fun for this deck is uh, having things that are essentially doing replacement effects when your opponent's creatures are dying. So what I mean by that is things like uh, Dothy Voidwalker, where you're forcing you know people to sacrifice something and then it will get a void counter, uh, you know, on it so then Dobby can essentially steal that and recast it. But what I like about this is it is forcing your opponents to exile a card so then their graveyards essentially stay empty while you can fill yours up because you can use that for a win con later, but I'll get into that in a bit. So. With Dothy Voidwalker, if a card would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere else, instead exile it with a void counter. And if you sacrifice it, you can choose an exiled card an opponent controls with a void counter on it. And you may play this, play it this turn without paying its mana cost. So that's super powerful. And I do see a lot of people run Dothy Voidwalker. So if you're looking for another option that maybe uh, other people's Dothy Voidwalkers won't have access to the spells that maybe you're getting from this is something like Draugr Necromancer. And I think people play this less because you have to have snow mana or snow sources in order to cast these spells. And if you're running Field of the Dead, you probably already have some snow lands in your deck, so might as well add this card, right? So if a non-token creature an opponent controls would die, exile that card with an ice counter on it instead. You may cast spells from among uh, cards and exile your opponent's own with ice counters on them. You may spend mana from snow sources as though were mana of any color to cast those spells. So I think this is pretty great because again, people are less likely to be running a Draugr Necromancer. So that means you have like to not worry about instances where maybe there's like two Dothy Voidwalkers out in this case, you're just going to have access likely to being the only one that has a Draugr Necromancer and is going to be able to cast those cards with ice counters on them. So one, it's a replacement effect, but two, you know, it's just kind of like another 
Dothy Voidwalker. Not as good, obviously, because it's more expensive and you actually have to pay mana to cast those cards. But I think it's cool to have like a secondary effect like that in your deck. Another card that I think will be really fun to use to help like one exile your opponent's cards, but also get value from their cards as well is Gisa Glorious Resurrector, because if a creature an opponent controls would die, exile it instead. And at the beginning of your upkeep, put all creature cards exiled with Gisa Glorious Resurrector onto the battlefield under your control, and they gain Decayed. So you essentially just make Decayed tokens of your opponent's creatures, and you can use that for Sack Fodder, or just swing out with whatever spooky creature they have and maybe hit them for some good damage. So I think these replacement effects to exile cards are gonna be really powerful. It could feel like a bit of a nombo if uh, you do have like things that care about death triggers out. So just something to be conscientious of there. But I think here that you can do some fun like <laughs> ruin your opponent's ability to have access to their own graveyards while taking, you know, cool things from them. So I really like these type of effects. But again, just be cognizant if you're really leaning into like death triggers that you're probably not going to get any of them if these cards are out. So something else to consider too, that if you want to have some cool like graveyard shenanigan theft effects, but you also want to see death triggers are going to be things like Author of Shadows. So this card, I don't see played it as much, which I get it because it is 5 CMC, so maybe it feels a bit expensive for essentially what it does. But when it enters the battlefield, exile all cards from all opponents' graveyards, choose a non-land card exiled this way, and you may cast that card for as long as it remains exiled. And you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast that spell. So I like that because you get the utility of it. It exiles all your opponent's graveyards and it's a body that you can sacrifice later and reanimate to maybe steal something cool in the future. So I think stuff like that's going to be really powerful. And this other one, last but not least, that I wanted to call out that I think would be really fun in here too is Puppeteer Click. Because again, if you're filling up your opponent's graveyards, uh, maybe use them. I don't know. So when it enters the battlefield, put target creature card from an opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It gains haste, and at the beginning of your next end step, exile it. So a little bit of graveyard hate with extra steps, but at least you're able to, you know, use your opponent's stuff for whatever value you want. And you could always sacrifice this before the beginning of the next end step. So I think that's pretty cool, especially if you're running like instant speed sack outlet stuff, because I think you can get a lot of value from this card. And this is something that uh, someone that was in my play group before, who is a mono black player, like to experiment with this card, because obviously if your win con is going to be something like living death, or you have a lot of graveyard shen shenanigans and you're sacrificing stuff, maybe you want to try to keep your graveyard protected a little bit. So they uh, tried out using this card and it seemed to be pretty successful the times that I did see it. And it's Prowling Geist Catcher. So it's four CMC and whenever you sacrifice another creature, exile it. If that creature was a token, put a plus one plus one counter on Prowling Geist Catcher. When Prowling Geist Catcher leaves the battlefield, return each card exiled with it to the battlefield under your control. So key point here is when it leaves the battlefield. So Prowling doesn't have to die or those cards exiled with them to come back. Essentially what I'm trying to say here is it, you get those cards back when Prowling Geist Catcher dies versus putting them in the graveyard where someone could, you know, use like Soul Guide Lantern to exile your graveyard. So I think this would be a cool thing to experiment with as well because you are going to be, you know, sacrificing a lot of creatures Maybe you don't care if you lose your graveyard, but I like to run a card as well called Living Death, where you essentially force everyone to sacrifice their creatures on the board, and then you trade the graveyard and what was on the board with each other. So basically the creatures get sacrificed on the board, those go into the graveyard, and the creatures from the graveyard go onto the board. And if you do that, you're also going to be giving back your opponent's creatures that were in the graveyard. So the idea is with those other cards that I had mentioned for graveyard hate is that you prevent that from happening by 
essentially clearing out what your opponent's, you know, graveyards are with these different, like, graveyard hate pieces. And then that leaves it up for you to cast Living Death, where you could either win through, like, an Ayara drain, because, uh, you know, black creatures are entering the battlefield, or Grey Merchant Apostle, um, other things like that that are going to care about, like, okay, these creatures died, these creatures are entering the battlefield, and you can drain or do other shenanigans like that. So I think that this commander sets you up pretty well for stuff like that. And I'd be really, really curious to see uh, basically what kind of big, you know, out of nowhere plays they could make just by reanimating the graveyard and stuff like that. So I'd really love to know uh, what your thoughts are on this commander. What are some effects that you would, you know, add to this? And if I missed anything, and you know like as far as like enchantments i would really like to know what your thoughts are on enchantments like are you just thinking enchantment creatures or whatever it is to get braids like other triggers on here again the only thing that really came to mind for me are kind of uh creature sacrifice like fodder things or artifact tokens like treasure and clue tokens i drew a blank on other things but i'd love to know what your thoughts are on this and thank you for watching. Uh, have a good one. <laughs> Bye.